Hey everyone, welcome back. So today, we're going to be ranking pretty much every third-party wired controller available for the Nintendo Switch. So as you can see, my wall of controllers is pretty much empty because each and every wired controller I own for the Nintendo Switch is here on the table. And I pretty much have every officially licensed third-party controller available. There's only maybe one exception that I can think of, and the only reason I don't have that controller is because it's actually identical to another one on the table with one added feature, but I'll be mentioning that when we get to it. And no, I am not reviewing any of the off-brand controllers. The reason why is because when we get to wired controllers, they're already so cheap with the cheapest ones here on the table starting at around $15, that there really is no reason to go totally off-brand at that point, you're just better off putting an extra $2 and getting an officially licensed controller. Now, that isn't necessarily true for the wireless controllers, because I actually have quite a few off-brand wireless controllers, and some offer quite interesting packages for the price. But that's content for another video, so let's talk about today. And to me, there are two major reasons why you would go wired. The first and the most obvious reason is the price. Simply wired controllers are generally a lot cheaper than wireless controllers, at least when you're looking at officially licensed brands. So basically, generally, for the same price, you'll be getting a higher quality controller in a wired controller than you will in an off-brand wireless one. And for someone who has to buy multiple controllers, possibly because you have a very large family or simply because you need a second player controller when your friends come over, well, Wired controllers are a perfect option price-wise. But however, there is another reason why some people will choose to buy a wired controller. If you look at the competitive fighting game scene, almost every serious competitor out there uses a wired controller or a wired fight stick. That's because even though today's technology has made latency uh, almost a non-issue, it's not yet a total non-issue. And a wireless controller for a really serious fighting game fanatic, you will detect a certain level of latency in there. And the fact that generally wired controllers don't have rumble is actually a positive feature for fighting games because the rumble feature can actually throw you off in some competitive scenes. And lastly, you never have to worry about batteries with a wired controller because basically it's pulling its power from the USB plug on your Nintendo Switch. But anyway, if you're watching this video, you must have some interest in buying a wired controller. So without further ado, let's get to it. I'll explain to you briefly how we're going to do this. So I am going to be taking up the controllers one by one, going from my least favorite all the way to my most favorite, and I'll be putting them up on the table in front of me as we go. Now, I might eventually run out of room and, you know, they might get piled together a little bit. But nonetheless, we'll get the general sense of the controllers from my least favorite to my favorite on this side. I'll also be giving you a few of the major points of why I'm placing the controller where it is on the list and what features maybe could be interesting for you. Also, just to let you know, I actually have full reviews on pretty much every controller on this table with maybe only one or two exceptions. And I'll mention them as we go and there's actually good reasons why I haven't reviewed them separately. So as we go, if there's a controller that really picks your curiosity and you'd like a lot more information on it, just check out my channel. I have a full review on the controller and you'll probably get the gist of why it is where it is. And just one last quick thing, I am not sponsored in any way by any of these companies. I've actually bought all of these controllers myself. So if you want to help support the channel and let me buy more stuff to review for you guys, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe if you aren't already. It really does help a lot and it helps me make more and more content. Now let's clear the table and get started. Now, if you follow my channel, my least favorite controller out of the bunch is probably not going to be a surprise for any of you out there, and that will be the Hori Pad. Now, this controller was a huge disappointment to me, especially because normally I actually really like Hori products. So this isn't a knock on all of Hori's products. This is just really this controller. I, I just can't stand it. 
It has one of the most poorly designed D-pads I have ever seen, and you should be seeing it on the screen right now. Basically, there's a removable plastic plate that acts as a D-pad with four separate buttons underneath. And honestly, diagonal inputs on this controller are a nightmare. Fighting games are just impossible to play, and I actually prefer the Nintendo Dog Face controller, the one that comes with your Switch basically, to using this controller. However, I do always want to give a product a fair shake, and there is one positive aspect to the Hori Pad that is now becoming relevant, and that is the fact that it has turbo functionality. And if you play Animal Crossing, turbo functionality with the four separate buttons is actually quite an impressive feat and can actually help you a lot in that game. It doesn't, however, save this controller and make it the perfect Animal Crossing controller because there's actually another controller on the list that I would prefer over this one simply because it's not totally useless in other games. So if you're looking for a cheap controller where D-pad inputs are not important at all in the games you play, the Hori Pad could be okay for you, but in my opinion, it's my least favorite of the controllers. So now next on our list, we're actually gonna have two controllers. We're going to have the old school classic GameCube controller that you can actually plug to your Switch with an adapter and also the Power A variant that they made, basically almost an exact reproduction of the controller. Now these are the first GameCube style controllers that we're looking at and I just want to let you guys know that I'm not evaluating them on their performance in Smash Brothers. I'm evaluating them as an everyday controller. We'll be doing a separate video where I'm looking only at performance in Smash Brothers and obviously this controller will be a lot higher on the list if we're looking at that one game alone. But now both these controllers as an everyday controller end up being really mediocre. And there are two major reasons why. And it's the same for both these controllers. The major problem with them is the fact that the back trigger buttons have such a long travel on them. If you're playing an FPS game or if you're playing a game that requires multiple presses of the ZL or ZR buttons, it is awful on this controller. It is really hard to get multiple rapid presses. And secondly, the fact that you only have a C stick here actually makes, you know, aiming in once again FPS games or basically any game that requires a very exact motions of the right thumbstick become very difficult. And that's pretty much why it's getting placed so low on the list. It just makes it really difficult as an everyday controller and to play every game with it. Now, next on our list is the Hori GameCube style controller. Now, I'm not harping on the GameCube style controllers. Don't worry, there's actually one on the list that is fairly high up there. Now, the Hori GameCube style controller is simply low on the list because of its C-Stick. Once again, playing everyday games where you need very precise motion in the right thumbstick is very difficult with a GameCube style controller because you have a C-Stick rather than a traditional thumbstick. However, what Hori has done that makes it better than the Power A variant is that we have regular clicky ZR and ZL buttons, meaning that for rapid presses, this controller does not suffer from the same problems as the Power A variant, making it a slightly better option if you're looking for a GameCube style controller and you want it to be also an everyday controller. Now, next on the list, we actually have one surprising controller, which is the PDP Rock Candy Controller. Now, when I'm saying surprising controller, it's because yes, this controller is towards the bottom of the list, but it is also the cheapest controller on the whole list. I got mine on sale for $12. And at $12, it's actually offering you a pretty solid package. It has no special features, but it's a pretty solid all-around controller. The only thing is that it is quite small, meaning that if you have large hands, it is not the most comfortable controller to use. And also, yes, the buttons and the thumbsticks do feel a lot cheaper than on some of the more expensive controllers we're gonna look at, but at the same time, if you want a really cheap option and you need to buy multiple controllers, the Rock Candy controllers are really a decent buy, 
And especially if you're buying controllers for children, they are excellent. My daughter, it's one of his, her favorite controllers simply because it's small enough to fit her hands. She's seven years old and she loves this controller. If you guys want more information, like I said, check out the review on my channel. It's one that's worth watching because honestly, this controller ended up surprising me. Now we're getting towards the top of the list. So from now on, the controllers are all going to be pretty solid offerings with a few features separating one from another. And the next controller on my list is actually the PDP face-off controller. Now this is one of the controllers you really have to be careful about. The reason why is because there's going to be another PDP face-off controller on this list, but it is the face-off deluxe. And those major differences are twofold. Number one, the normal PDP face-off controller, although the faceplate is removable to be able to change the look, it actually doesn't come with an alternate faceplate. So the one you get is the one you have, and if you want more, you actually have to buy them separately or take them from other controllers you own of the face-off brand. Meaning that the option is there, but you can't really use it unless you buy something else. And number two, the regular version of the face-off controller has actually no macro buttons at the back. And instead, it has turbo functionality. And when I was referring earlier to a better controller offering turbo functionality than the Hori Pad, this is the controller I was referring to. Because other than that, it's a pretty solid all-around controller. You can play any game just fine with this controller. The D-pad is decent, although it's not the best on the list, but at the same time, it won't be a detriment, meaning that I would choose easily this controller over the dog face controller, and you'll be getting decent performance out of it. This is also the only controller on the list that I do not have a specific review on this version of the controller. The reason why is because other than the fact that it has turbo instead of the macro buttons, it is identical to the face-off deluxe controller. And I didn't think it merited its own review on top of the face-off deluxe controller simply because you're swapping macro buttons for turbo functionality. So if you are looking at buying this controller, I would say just watch my review on the PDP face-off controller with the macro buttons and just swap in your mind the fact that instead of the macro, you got turbo. Now, when we started this thing, I told you not every GameCube style controller was going to be at the bottom of the list. And here I am keeping my promise to all of you. We have the PDP version of their GameCube style controller. Now, this controller is actually one of my overall favorite controllers for everyday gaming. If you can get used to the muscle memory for the button layout, of course. Because when you start playing games that aren't Smash Brothers, the fact that the buttons aren't in the same place as a traditional controller will play games with your mind for the first few hours. And as I say in my review, if you do start playing with a GameCube style controller as an everyday controller, I strongly recommend you just never use traditional controllers anymore to not ever lose that muscle memory and really maintain maximum performance. But what sets this controller apart from the other GameCube style controllers is primarily one thing. It has a swappable C-stick to a traditional thumbstick. And that is such an advantage when you're playing games that require precise motion of the right thumbstick that it really saves it as an everyday controller. But more than that, the overall feel of this controller is just great. In my hands, it is the controller that actually feels most comfortable, I would say even overall. Holding this controller to me is just a dream. However, I'm not dedicated enough to set aside the other controllers and really dedicate myself to getting the muscle memory to be able to be as efficient with a GameCube style controller as a traditional one. And at the same time, I have to review controllers for all of you, so I really can't not use traditional style controllers anymore. But if it wasn't for that, I would put serious thought into using the PDB controller for everyday gaming. Because the controller just feels great in hand, it has some really nice weight to it that I actually appreciate in the controller, it feels solid, sturdy, and overall, the swappable C-Stick just sold it for me 100%. So now we're at the last two controllers on the list. And these two controllers are very, very close to one another. And I could go either way, 
but I did choose which overall is my favorite. And I'm going to tell you why I prefer one over the other. But ultimately, the good news for you is that, in my opinion, if you choose either one of the last two models, you actually just can't go wrong. So for me, coming in second place is going to be the PDP Face Off Deluxe. Now, this controller pretty much has everything you could ask for in a wired controller. Now, this is actually the other controller that I'm missing a variant on because they came out with a PDP Face Off Deluxe Audio Plus that has an added audio jack on it. However, I don't have that controller and simply buying another one just for the audio jack when I already had the face off deluxe seemed like a waste. But what really sets this controller at the top of the list is actually two things. Number one, this is another one of the controllers that feel excellent in hand. It has good weight to it and the thumbsticks, the buttons are really responsive. It's a very comfortable controller to use, especially if you have larger hands. It also generally comes with two face plates, giving you the choice between a matte finish generally and a glossy finish. And it does change the feel in your hand and you will generally end up tending towards one or the other. And after that, the cherry on top is that it has programmable macro buttons. And in the wired controller, these last two are the only two with programmable macro buttons. And it really sets these controllers apart. Simply because in my opinion, performance wise, having a couple of macro buttons is really superior to turbo functionality. The number of games where it will give you an advantage or at least a more comfortable gameplay really sets it apart from just basic turbo. It also has a really good D-pad. However, it's not my favorite overall, and that's pretty much what tipped me in favor of the last controller on our list as my overall favorite. So now, without further ado, let's take a look at it. So here we have it. The PowerRay Enhanced Controller is my overall favorite wired controller. And I actually have two of them here, just because I want to show you one of its advantages as well, is that PowerRay Enhanced Controllers are in my opinion, the controller that has the most visual variants available. If you love Pokemon, you have a controller. If you love Zelda, you have a version of the controller. If you love Splatoon, you have a version of the controller, and it goes on and on. PowerRay has almost endless variations of their controllers. One important thing though, you want to make sure that the controller you're getting is an enhanced version. The reason why is they do have a standard PowerRay controller. And that standard controller, although there are a lot of really beautiful visual variations on it, is lacking an audio jack and the programmable macro buttons at the back. And without those two features, I would easily say that it would knock it down at least a couple of spots on this list. So the one you're looking for is really the enhanced version. And basically, everything I said that was true about the face-off controller is pretty much true about the PowerA Enhanced Controller. However, what tipped the scales for me in favor of the PowerA is the D-pad. I find that the D-pad on this one is slightly more raised up and also slightly more responsive than on the PDP controller, making it all that slightly better for those 2D fighting games. One last little hint about this controller, Although you might want to choose your controller simply based on the theme, one important difference that I did find is that some D-pads on the Powery controllers have a matte finish such as the two that I have, but others also have a glossy finish such as the wireless version I have of this controller. And the matte finish on the D-pad is a lot better for your thumb than the glossy finish. The glossy finish is actually sort of hard at the edges, meaning that after hours of gameplay, you most likely will have calluses from the glossy version. But overall, this is one darn solid controller. But as I said, either this one or the PDP Face Off Deluxe, both are at the top of their game. So there we have it, and I could barely fit them all on this table. Now, like I said earlier, if you want more information on any of these controllers, check out the reviews on my channel. They're all there and they'll give you a lot more details of each one of the controllers and a lot more close-ups of the front and the back of them as well. At the same time, I'll be leaving Amazon affiliate links at the bottom in the description of this video. So if you are going to pick up any of these controllers and you want to help the channel out a little bit, please use those links. 
But what's even more important, like I said earlier, is to drop those likes, subscribe if you aren't already, and activate that notification bell so you know when my next video comes out. Now, I would also like to know what all of you think. So if you have bought any of these controllers and really find that either you really liked it or disliked it, please leave it down in the comments down below. It'll help me adjust if ever we do a second part to this list that maybe some of the controllers people can have different experiences than mine and it'll help me better judge in the future. Now, lastly, I just wanna thank all of you so much for watching and as usual, I hope I'll see all of you in my next video.